Welcome, in this video I will be showing you how to make a prime number finder with Python and I will be showing you this in five levels of efficiency. So here I will start with the first level of efficiency, least efficient, not very good, you know, pretty slow in that. And then slowly as the video progresses you will see the programs get better and better and more efficient. I do a lot of this kind of Python program stuff on my channel, so if you end up enjoying this video please subscribe, it would mean the absolute world to a small channel such as myself. So, without further ado, let's get straight into the video. This is version 1, the kind of most crude prime number finder you can have. So here I just initialize a variable C, and I set a while true loop so it just keeps running forever. You indent c by 1, and you assume that c is a prime. Then you check all the numbers up to c minus 2, and this, this is the modular sign, so basically that tries to divide it, and if it gives you the remainder. So if the remainder is 0, that means it's not a prime. So what it does is it checks all the numbers up to c, sets prime equal to false, obviously, if it finds something with the remainder of zero, because that means it's divisible by that number, so it's not a prime. And then if it's a prime, it just prints C. So this is really pretty inefficient. Um, I'll give it a quick run, especially once you start getting to the bigger numbers, because obviously for a number like 1,000 or 2,000, it has to try and divide it by all the numbers from 1 to 2,000. But as you can see here, it's um, decently efficient. But uh, decently efficient doesn't really tell us how efficient it is. Um, as you can see, it's kind of jolting a bit where it's finding large gaps, because this is only printing the primes, and it's really slowing down now. But what we want to know is actually how efficient it is, not just that it is efficient. And a good way to do that would be to measure the amount of time it takes to get to 10,000 right? Because we can't really measure it by doing the number of prime numbers a second, because as the numbers get bigger, there are less and less prime numbers. So all we need to do is set up a quick timer, and once it gets to 10,000, it just prints out how long it was working for. So let's get that implemented quickly. Here at the start, it just takes time dot time, and then as soon as C gets greater than 10,000, so that means it's equal to 10,001, just prints the difference between those two times. And that's actually in seconds. So I can go and add a that there. So let's run it. And see what the results are. Now this one is obviously going to be a little slow. And um, as you get more and more efficient, the time to ten thousand will obviously increase. And here we are. Time to 10,000, 54 seconds. So, nearly a minute to check 10,000 prime numbers. Let's see how we can make the program more efficient. Next we get to version 2. As you can see, I've already added the time.time .time thing. So here, it just prints 1, 2 first. Even though 1 technically isn't a prime number. So I'll just ignore that. <clears throat> anyway, then it makes a list of primes, which obviously is empty because it's not found any primes yet. Um, the first improvement you'll see is that it adds 2 to the counter. Um, that's because it starts at 1. Basically, it just isn't checking any of the even numbers because that's a really easy optimization. Basically, doubles the program speed because it's only checking every other number because you don't need to check any even numbers because you know that the only even prime is 2. This is just our efficiency timer and again it assumes it's a true, uh, it assumes it's prime. But instead of trying to divide it by each number, what it does here is it tries to divide it by every single prime number. Because math 
Yeah, because math. And basically, if you've got a number, you don't actually need to check if it's divisible by every number below it. You only need to check if it's divisible by every prime number below it. Because if you take a number like 12, yes, that's divisible by 6. But if it's divisible by 6, it's also divisible by the prime numbers 3 and 2. So you only need to check if it's divisible by 2 and 3. No need to check if it's divisible by 6. Obviously, because every number is a product of prime numbers. So that greatly decreases the amount of numbers it has to check for divisibility by. And obviously, if it finds it's divisible by a prime, it says it's not a prime. And then what it does is it adds the prime it found to the list. So the next number is checked for divisibility. So 3 isn't checked for anything. Um, and then the number 5, it checks if it's divisible by 3. Number 7, it checks if it's divisible by 3 or 5. And so on and so on. So giving this one a run, you'll see that it's already much, much faster. The first one was 54 seconds. 21.25 seconds. Massive, massive improvement in efficiency. But we can do better. This is still pretty inefficient, especially considering how stupendously large prime numbers can get. So, let's take a look at version 3. Welcome to efficiency level 3. So, to start off with, prints 2 and 3 as the first two prime numbers. Just makes things easier for the program later down the line. And it decides its only prime number is 3. And it starts at counter off at 3. Now, this program politely asks you how many numbers you want to check. That's just a little feature um, because the program is obviously getting pretty efficient and it's not a very good idea to have a program that just keeps on going until you kill it. So you can just put like, oh, I want to find 100,000 prime numbers and whatever. This start bit is obviously just um, our little timer. Well, our little timer, my little timer. Again, assumes it's a prime. This time it finds the square root of the number you're checking, of the counter C. Because if you think about it, the definition of a prime is that it's only divisible by one in itself. That means that you don't actually have to check if it's divisible by all the prime numbers up to itself. You only need to check if it's divisible by all the prime numbers up to the square root of itself. Because when you're multiplying two numbers together, well, if it's a square number, Obviously, you can times the square roots together. But if you want to make that number, you need to times it by a number less than the square root and a number greater than the square root. So basically, we only need to check all the numbers up to the square root of the number, which makes it amazingly more efficient for big numbers. Because obviously, once you get to like massively big numbers, the square root is not so massively big. Um, so that really improves efficiency in the long run. First, it checks if it's a prime number. If it is, it needs to check one greater. And then what it does is it checks if it's divisible by all the primes up to the square root s of the counter. It goes through the entire list of primes it's got. And then if it gets up to the square root and it's not found any divisibility, it just adds it to the list. And finally, what it does is it makes a file called primes.txt and just writes all the primes into that. So, let's see how much more efficient this program is. So here we can just put a massive number, doesn't matter. And off we go. Disappointingly, this program is not that much more efficient. 20 seconds, still an improvement, um, nonetheless. Um, but that loss in efficiency is probably because for every number it has to calculate the square root, and that obviously takes time. But because it's only checking all the numbers up to the square root, it will be much more efficient for numbers larger. But we can go more efficient. So, let's see how that's done. This is the next level of efficiency, and just a better program. 
What this program starts off by doing is it opens a file called primes.txt. This is a file which the prime number version 3 wrote to, and this file writes to, uh, this program writes to at the end. So what it does is it reads the list in that file, um, removes the square brackets from the list, and just extracts all the numbers. And then it makes that list of primes from the document. So basically what you can do with this finder is you can run it, stop it, and then run it again later, and it'll just continue where it left off. Again here, as for how many you want to check, goes every two. Again it finds the square root, and here it checks if it's a square number. If not, then it does the checks for the primes all the way up to the square root of the number. So, and then once it gets to the end, writes them to the file. So it can continue where it left off. Let's see if this makes a good improvement to the efficiency. And it appears that this program is not much more efficient than the last 19 seconds. But that's to be expected. There weren't that many improvements in this program. The main one was the fact that it writes them to the file, so you can continue where it left off. But there is one final ultimate level of efficiency. The one thing holding the first four programs back until now. The first four versions you saw there was one thing they had in common that was holding them back, and that was that they printed every single prime number they found. Now, usually in Python, printing is good. It's used as a way so you can see what the code is doing, and here it's really helpful because you can see how far the code is into finding the prime numbers. But, as with, well, any line of code, printing takes resources. Right? It takes time to execute a print. Even though it's a short amount of time, when you're doing lots and lots of prints, it really starts to add up. So, this version 5, again, opens the file, extracts all the primes it found last time, adds them into a list. Asks you how many you want to check. This is just the time is 10,000 again. Finds the square root, and this is your checking same as from version 4, except this time it only prints every 100,000th prime number. That's the kind of efficiency we're looking for here. And then it writes them all to a file, which with this checker will get pretty large. And for those of you that thought printing was not resource intensive, Not point not five seconds to ten thousand prime numbers. That is the massive difference printing can make. If we get rid of the whole time thing, I can show you just how many numbers this prime number finder can find. And the actual text file starts getting pretty large after a while. So you can check for what. 100,000 prime numbers, done, just like that. That was 100,000 prime numbers. Of course, it only prints every 100,000 prime numbers. And I'll show you what the primes.txt file looks like. So these are all the primes it's found. This file is currently sitting at 65 kilobytes of size. Not too big, but just so many prime numbers it's found. These are all the prime numbers from Zero. Two is missing. <clears throat> These are all the prime numbers from zero all the way up to 10,000. 100,000. 100,000 even. Crazy. But because it can do all the ones from zero to 100,000 that fast, imagine how much it can go further. So here I've said it to do a million numbers. Now, of course, it's going to take... The problem with doing efficiency by checking the first 10,000 numbers is that the first 10,000 are actually the fastest. The first 10,000 are faster than the second 10,000 because there's less checks to do. But now it's checked a million numbers. Um, I um, got rid of the part where it 
it, it, it just prints the last one, basically. So that's checked everything. It's checked um, 1.1 million numbers. And if you take a look at the file, primes.txt, a simple text file now sitting at half a megabyte. Mind blowing, the number of numbers are in here. But of course, you can get more. You can run this program as much as you want. You can just put like a ridiculously big number in and just leave it running. You know, it's, just, it's crazy. And two hours and 120 megabytes later, here we have the Primes text file, except this time it's much, 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 much bigger. The largest prime number we have here. Oh, it scrolls across as well. Well, would you look at that? So no matter how big you thought it was when I was scrolling down, it's at least like 10 times bigger. So that is not the largest. Oh, that is the largest. The largest prime number we have on there is 21 million. Oh, that's not 21 million. 211 million. 100,093. That's pretty big. I've ran this um, program for much longer. I've gotten prime numbers in the billions. Um, it starts to not become as fun after that because you're just waiting for the program to finish. And if the program happens to crash mid kind of search, it's all gone. That entire session is just invalid. Um, so, yeah. And obviously the files just get stupidly big. But this is a way that you can build yourself a simple prime number finder with Python and find pretty big prime numbers pretty quickly. I mean, I got to 211 million. What? Yeah, two hours of running the program. So if you enjoyed this video, like, comment and subscribe. You know what to do. Every YouTuber tells you to do it. But I would be very happy if you did it to me. And hopefully I'll see you in another Python video just like this one. Have a nice rest of the day, if no one's told you that yet. Yeah. I, in fact, I hope your day is as good, out of ten, I hope it's as good as the sum of all these prime numbers added together. That's how good I hope the rest of your day is. Enjoy. Enjoy.